Hi, this is Russ Anderson. Today I'm going to talk about jitter and how you can reduce it. You can have jitter in your tracker paths that creates jitter in your camera path, which is bad. You can get jitter a lot of different other ways also, and I'm going to consider some of those other ways in a different tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be focusing just on the tracker paths themselves and how you can improve them. Now, one way to improve tracker paths and camera paths is by filtering. And Synthize will let you do that, but that's not really a good idea. It's a, a band-aid. Instead, we'd like to go and actually improve the tracker data itself. So let's go take a look at uh, one of our trackers here. And if you scrub through this thing a bit, I'm just going to hit the 5 key to keep it centered here. Um, you'll see that there's a pretty rough camera path on this. And especially in this beginning part of the shot. Now, for comparison, let's see what happens if we fire up the supervised tracker. And kind of the obvious point is that a supervised tracker and a supervised tracking of a shot can always be better. Because a person can always go and improve a automatically generated track. Uh, but it turns out that the algorithms used in supervised tracking are inherently better than what goes on in a uh, automatically generated track. It's not necessarily a big difference, and it depends on shot by shot, but the supervised trackers do have uh, some advantages that we, we can use. So here we've got a side-by-side -side of a supervised track. So it's a little bit on the right there. And a automatically generated track. And you know, I picked this one out to be uh, illustrative. And let's just switch back and forth there. Now I, I selected the automatically generated track. So now let's go look at the tracker graphs. That's the automatically generated track. If I hit undo, that's back now to the supervised track. So you can see as I switch back and forth that uh, this supervised track has inherently a, uh, a bit lower R. And you know I've got the gain turned up pretty high on this whole thing. Um, so the question next is, you know, how can we go and take this or the automatically generated tracker and make it into basically something that's similar to a supervised track? And we now have a script in Synthize that's called Fine Tune Trackers. And it has this interesting parameter up here that's key spacing. And take a look at this. Uh, this number is 12. So when I run the script, all of a sudden now it's taken all the keys on that automatic tracker, the one, one key per frame, and now there's only a key every 12 frames. And in between, it went and retracked using the supervised tracking algorithm. So now we have a correspondingly smoother path for that originally, what was originally a automatically generated tracker. So if I go to the tracker graph again, this is uh, the smoothed out, uh, or the fine tuned version. You know, there's what we had before, here's what we've got now. So we've made some, some real significant progress here. So now let's go back to the scene and we'll do away with that tracker. And let's select all of our trackers now and run the fine tuning process on all of them. Now this is gonna take a bit longer and we'll be having more to say about that in the future. But um, while, while that's running, Again, let me point out that you know this isn't something that's necessary on every shot. It is something that you can take a look at and see if it's going to be relevant to your particular shot. And it's going to depend on what kind of detail there is in the shot, what kind of compression artifacts there are, and so on. So it's something for you to look at. It's something you can easily take a look at just on you know one or two trackers in different parts of the scene and see if this is going to make a difference or not. You know. Plenty of shots, it, it makes no difference really at all. 
some shots it, like this particular one, you know, it, it makes a very substantial difference in, in some parts. So it, it's really just something for you to take a look at and uh, hopefully be able to take advantage of. Okay, so we're back now. And what we need to do now, how about, I had previously gone and done an automatic track on this scene. So let's run that track again. And we're going to do the same thing that we did with the individual track or being able to compare the two. Okay, so let's take a look at the object graph now. I'm going to turn up the gain on this quite a bit. Our position and rotation gains, basically. So uh, this is the solve that's been adjusted. If we undo that last solve, you can see what the solve was like previously. So as I just switch back and forth, you can see the impact that that fine-tuning process has had on the solve. So one thing also to, to take a look at after this is to go over and let's just see. You can't go back and show this directly, but um, you know, I, I don't see anything particularly obvious. Um, but with this technique, you can get in individual spiky sorts of errors in some spots if the search region of the supervised tracking pass has gotten to be uh, big enough. You'll see it hop sometimes to some other spots. So one of the things you want to check is just whether there's anything big in the uh, tracking graph that you want to correct. And just like in all tracking situations, you know, you should always go and take a look at uh, some of these trackers to see what's going on. And like I said, you can always take in any track and, and make it better. So uh, hopefully uh, this has given you some, some food for thought and some ways maybe to generate some even smoother tracks. Thanks.